The next artists we salute are the lords of the lens, the crusty poets called cinematographers, who say rude things to actors while making love to them with lights. Now, an actor may act or a director may direct brilliantly, but if the cameraman takes the day off, we all take the day off. It is the cameraman who decides whether the sun should be rising in the east or setting in the west, and what this does to the performer's cosmetic or the author's literary intentions. The cinematographer tells the light what to do, and if he does his job well, we thank him for holding time still, for keeping it in proportion five years, 50 years, eventually 100 years from now. Without him, the camera is empty, and the drama is lost. The winner is... And the winner is... Two times Academy Award winner, Haskell Wexler. Haskell Wexler was born on February 6, 1922, and began his feature filmmaking career as a cinematographer in the late 1950s. Having previously shot educational and industrial films, the Chicago native had traveled to California to attend Berkeley, but dropped out after one year. He served as a merchant seaman during World War II and then returned to Illinois. Wexler and his father purchased and refurbished an armory in Des Plaines, turning it into a film studio. The venture was unsuccessful and Wexler set out to learn about film production, beginning as a cameraman and eventually working up to a cinematographer. Haskell Wexler has won 15 awards including two Oscars and a total of other 12 nominations. Stake Out on Dope Street, 1958, marked his first although uncredited work as a cinematographer. He went on to shoot several features like the Hoodlum Priest in 1961, noted for their social theme. You can't change a man by mouthing a lot of pious cliches at him. What do you expect me to say to a tough kid who's on the make for a heist? Now, Johnny, you be a good boy or you go to hell. Wexler has stated that Ilya Kazan's America, America, 1963, marked the turning point in his Hollywood career and includes some of the best photography that he shot. ...by the old people in my family. They remember Anatolia, the great central plateau of Turkey and Asia. And they remember the mountain air just standing above... He went on to shoot the intense and claustrophobic black and white images of Mike Nicholas, who's afraid of Virginia Wolf in 1966. Virginia Wolf, Virginia Wolf, who's afraid of Virginia? <laughs> 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 Which earned him an Oscar. I hope, I hope we can use our art for peace and for love. Thanks providing memorable and distinctive looks to Norman Jewison's In the Heat of the Night in 1967. On your feet, boy. I mean now. Got a name, boy? Virgil Tips. Virgil. Where you come from? There ain't no trains this time of morning. I could have had you shot. Skulls caved in, man. George Lucas's American Graffiti in 1973 and Milos Foreman's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest in 1975. Why do you think they might think that? They don't make a bit of sense to me. Do you think there's anything wrong with your mind, really? Not a thing, Doc. Uh, excuse me, miss. Do you think it might be possible to turn that music down so maybe a couple of the boys could talk? Your hand is staining my window. His beautiful rendering of the muted tones of the American Dust Bowl, including several storms in Hull Ashby's Bound for Glory 
in 1976. He was born in 1912 in Okima, Oklahoma. He was raised in the grit of the Dust Bowl and the poverty of the Depression. Earned him a second Oscar for Best Cinematography. Thank you for this honor. Uh, I want to thank all the fellow workers on Bound for Glory. As all of you know better than anyone, uh, filmmaking is a cooperative thing, and we had, we had a good crew, good people, and a good film. Thank you. Wexler also lensed Ashby's Vietnam era coming home in 1978. A time of innocence. A time of confidences Long ago it must be I have a photograph Preserve your memories They're all that's left you John Silas' union-busting tale made to in 1987 It were 19 and 20 in the southwest field and things was tough the miners was trying to bring the Union to West Virginia, and the coal operators and their gun thugs were set on keeping them out. Them was hard people, the coal miners, then they wasn't nobody who wanted to cross. The urban gang drama, Colors in 1988, The biopic Blaze in 1989. I gotta confess. What's that? I can't cook. We'll work around it. But there you go. It's a powerful expression of basic human needs. Now who's the guy with the cot? That's the governor, and he wants to meet you. Earl Kemp Long. It's a great pleasure to meet you, Your Honor. Oh, God, them's a big pair of rascals you got. Are you talking about my eyes, governor? It was a romance that shocked the country. Marry me. After this election's over. And a love affair that couldn't be stopped. Do you like to make love with your boots on? Get better traction that way. Damn it, Earl, you got trouble. People say you've been keeping company with a stripper. <laughs> and The Babe in 1992. Where did he come from? Where'd you come from, Rook? From out of nowhere. He played inside ball. Hit him where they ate. Well, they ain't over the fences, so that's where I hit him. I used to get arrested for that. Now they give me a check. Silas's Irish Fable, The Secret of Rohan Inish in 1994. <laughs> The sea gives, the sea takes away. It was a strange day. The air was very still, like it is sometimes before a storm. We, Jamie, sleeping in his cradle. It's only. Morning-ish. Aye. It's a wonderful story. And the period crime drama Mulholland Falls in 1996. Crime in LA. If you break the law, you'll have to answer to a special squad of detectives. Now, this is Mulholland Falls, Jack. You guys can't do this. This is America. <laughs> this isn't America, Jack. <laughs> this is LA. With their own brand of justice. Four men, no politics. Wexler has also produced written, directed, and photographed a number of documentary films in his long career. Among the highlights are the Oscar-winning Interviews with My Live Veterans in 1970. We spoke to five of the American soldiers who were at My Lai on March 16, 1968. They were James Berthold of Niagara Falls, New York, Gary Garfolo of Stockton, California, Gary Crosley of Del Rio, Texas, Bernardo Simpson of Jackson, Mississippi, and Michael Bernhardt of Tarpon Springs, Florida. Introduction to the Enemy in 1974 and at the Max in 1991, which recorded the 1990 European tour of the Rolling Stones.
Bachelor was also one of several directors of photography interviewed for the superlative Visions of Light, The Art of Cinematography in 1992. I worked uh, for James Wong Howe as um, on the second unit camera on a picture called Picnic. And um, I did uh, a number of the game shots and also the last shot of the film, which was a helicopter shot. And at that time, uh, helicopters were were not used for photography. The, the military, the Navy, as a matter of fact, just had helicopters. One of the best moments of my life uh, was when um, the dailies came on, which was about three days later. It was uh, CinemaScope at the time. And I was sitting next to Jimmy Howe, and uh, my scene came up. And it, it, it was quite spectacular, particularly to an audience who had not seen helicopter shots before. And Jimmy Howe said, oh, he said, very good, very good. And so even now, like when I shoot, when I do a shot that I really like, I say in my ear the way Jimmy Howe said to me, oh, very good, very good. My generation had very, been very, very impressed with uh, films from Europe. We'd had an opportunity to see these. And, and, and the, our pioneers, Haskell Wexler and Conrad Hall and so on, who were giving us examples of, of, of reacting to the European style. And later on, when you've got Vilmo Sigsman and Laszlo Kovacs and people that were coming... A passionate liberal, Wexler, produced, directed, wrote and photographed one of the most devastating and technically sophisticated anti-establishment films ever made, Medium Cool, in 1969. Drawing on the stylistic and theoretical advances made by such vanguard figures as John luc Godard and taking its title almost straight from the mouth of media guru Marshall McLuhan. Medium Cool was set and filmed during the 1968 Chicago Democratic Convention. It chronicles in striking neo-documentary style the affairs both professional and amorous of a detached TV news cameraman as he becomes increasingly aware of the political ramifications of his work. The dynamics that are happening in society. We don't we don't deal with the static things. We deal with the things that are happening. We deal with the violence. Five cameramen have been killed. One guy in Germany, he was beat to death by a mob. Just literally stoned, beat to death for UPI. The crowd thought he was taking pictures for the police. Wherever I go, I'm beat up. Get the guys with the cameras! The film remains a landmark of political cinema and an insightful essay on the cool media. Wexler also helmed Latino in 1985, a thought drama about an Hispanic Vietnam veteran assisting in the training of the U.S.-backed Contras in Nicaragua. The film divided critics and audiences along partisan political lines. You will be called upon for other missions. They are not public knowledge. A CIA-backed secret army known as Contras raid into Nicaragua from bases in Honduras. For TV, Wexler shot footage of the Special Olympics included in the Bew Bridges, directed long form. The Kid from Nowhere for NBC in 1982 and was primary director of photography for the Japan 2 sequences of the documentary Benny Carter Symphony in Riffs for A&E in 1992. My name is Haskell Wexler and I like making films. I got an Academy Award for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Wow. I got an Academy Award for Bound for Glory and I got uh, Four or five other nominations. I can't remember. Hey, what, not, let me ask you one question. What would you tell an actor or an actress that is, is breaking into the business? How? What, what would you tell them how to get into it? Uh, first, you have to have some other job. Yeah, another job. Yeah. Okay. When we were making '61, it was the first time I had ever been to a safety meeting on a movie, and I knew it was going to be hours. There were going to be long hours. We didn't have a lot of budget. We had a lot of baseball stuff to shoot. If you think a baseball game moves slowly, try shooting a baseball game. Haskell was very eloquent in it, saying nothing good happens when there's long hours. People don't function well. People get hurt. We're the only group of industrial workers in the world 
fighting for a 14-hour day. How about looking into 12 on and 12 off? It's a grassroots organization that's looking into issues of health and safety and, uh, and not worrying so much about the bottom line. I don't, I, I don't really know uh, why I should get it because uh, probably because of what you were saying on the screen there is that I want more humane conditions under the way we work, okay? Let's remember that sleep deprivation is, is, is unique to the human. There is no animal that tries, tries to sleep deprive itself. I'm young, I'm strong, I can work hard all night long. A motorist, he looks like he's in very bad shape, like his car is totaled out. There's a whole lot of smoke, and he could be hurt, or whoever's in there could be hurt. I, I remember being very angry that he lost his life simply for working hard. Wexler died in his sleep at the age of 93 on December 27, 2015 at his home in Santa Monica, California. Movies are a voyeuristic experience. You have to make the audience feel like they are peeking through a keyhole. I think of myself as the audience, then I use lights, framing and motion to create a focal point. <laughs> 